Why do you want a 3D printer? Or why are you considering to buy a 3D printer? If you already have 3D printer, why are you considering to replace it or to add additional printer? These are all the questions that can help you guide if 3D printer is good for you or not. What you probably expect is reliable, not expensive, out-of-box experience that can print with a bunch of materials. And today we will be looking at GD Q1 Pro. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let's start with a full disclosure. This is not a sponsored video. GD hasn't paid me to do video, but they did send me printer free of charge. They also had zero impact on the video I'm releasing or content that I'm creating about this printer. So everything you see in this video will also be first for them. Let's start with some dry statistics. This is an FDM printer, direct drive printer. It has double-sided texture built plate that can heat up to 120 degrees with a size of 245 by 245 millimeters. And the usable height is, once again, 245 millimeters. Maybe this is the biggest con or negative aspect of this printer. Why? Yes, sure, it is bigger than some more popular brands, not that big, but bigger than them. But also the case of the printer is much bigger. You can actually fit a larger printer inside the box where this fully metallic printer is enclosed in. The printer is pretty bulky and heavy, but that also is a good thing. For the printer, you want it to be as sturdy and to move as less as possible, because today's printers are doing some high accelerations and any vibration can impact the quality of the print. Hot end can be heated up to 350 degrees centigrade. And one thing that this printer also has is the heated chamber. It can be heated up to 60 degrees. I never try to heat it because for me printing with ABS 45 to 48 degrees is just enough. I don't need to go above that. But both 350 degrees for the hot end and heated chamber or heater inside the chamber is something that most competitors do not have. When we are already talking about specs, printer has two filament sensors. One is where the filament enters the case and this filament sensor is used to track if the filament is moving or not. The other sensor is located just above the extruder and this one is used to detect if the filament is running out or not. But there is also one nice thing about this filament sensor. It also, because of how it's made, can measure the diameter of the filament. So you can see live in the UI or the clipper the diameter of the filament you are using. The declared speed of this printer is 600 millimeters per second. Maximum hot and flow is 30 millimeter cubic per second. And acceleration is maximum at 20,000 millimeters per second, which are some high end speeds. While I've been testing it, I've never seen speed more than 600 and acceleration due to the parts that I was printing never reached 20k. But according to the specs, the printer should be able to reach those speeds. Again, it all depends on the material you're printing, but also the object, the size of the object and also the shape of the object. Those were the specs, but what you can actually do with this printer? Well, you can actually print with most of the materials available. PLA, PETG, ABS, ASA, ABS with carbon fiber or glass fiber, you name it, most of those things you can print on this printer. But I was also surprised when I received the printer because it's a bit different than those printers I've seen in the first reviews. There are two major changes and for me both of them are really major. First one is the filament path. While previously the filament path was from the back side and you can use the included filament stand or mount, to mount it on the back side and then feed the filament there, no, the revision that I received has filament path on the side. And if you combine it with the STL that you can download from the GD site, that positions filament above the printer, you have really nice setup. Second thing is Ethernet port. When I was looking at reviews, I was really sad to see the Ethernet port missing. In my opinion, this is a very crucial thing. By being able to plug in the cable, and just avoiding any potential issues with the Wi-Fi card or Wi-Fi network or any interference. As far as other things are concerned, they are the same as other review units. 
we have a very accessible hot end where you can just pop up the cover and access hot end, cooler, filament path, extruder, everything that is under the hood. Camera is also included in the case. But I will talk about camera also later in the video when I talk about pros and cons of this printer. I was very disappointed. As you can see, the image is foggy. No matter what I do, no matter how many times I try to clean the lens. And yes, for all of you that are thinking that I still haven't removed the protected foil, the foil has been removed, but still the image is very foggy. Printer also has automatic nozzle cleaner and I've used it a lot. As you can see, my poop bucket is completely full because I used it not just to clean the nozzle before the prints, but I also used it when I was replacing the filament or changing the colors. Some of the reviewers said that they are missing the handle, but actually there is a groove on the printer and you do not need the handle. You can pop it or open the door with just one finger. And when we are only talking about opening the printer, yes, the top can be completely opened. This is a lid and it can be lifted and put back on when you need it. If you are printing with materials such as PLA that do not need or even do not like heated chambers, open the door and open the lid. I've already mentioned that there is heater inside. And yeah, there was some drama. In my opinion, a really forced drama, but that's just my personal opinion. You do not go poking with a fork in a toaster, was my comment and I'm still standing by it. You will not poke a toaster with a fork or knife, because you know that you will die. Same thing applies here. If the printer is running, if it's powered on, why would you poke anything inside the heating element? You don't do that in your bathroom, you don't do that with your room heater, why would you do that with the printer? especially since this printer is using mains voltage to heat everything up. If you're not poking with your finger inside the power adapter, that's also 220 volts, why would you do that with a heater? Sure, the grid could be better, but you can fix that. There is STL also available from the GT site. Go there, download, print it and add it to the current grid on the heater itself. Some other printers do not have active chamber heating, for example my Voron 2.4. And if I want to print ABS, I turn on the bed, which is powered by 220 volts, and I leave it for 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes until it reaches 40, 45 degrees. Here, in under 10 minutes, actually around 6 minutes, I get from whatever temperature the printer was at, to 45 degrees or 48 because I was mostly printing on 48 degrees. Now let's talk about testing because most of you are probably curious about what I was testing. Well, we started with the stream. On the stream we unboxed it, set it up and started first print. The first print of course was Banshee. After the stream I replaced the PLA which was used during the testing with the ABS and I started printing mechanical parts. And I did print a lot. I think I'm currently around 170 hours of printing and around 1500 or 1 1.5 kilometers of filament used. I printed all of the parts required for the enraged rabbit card feeder and this is the multi-material unit for my Voron. Then I printed all the parts needed for the ERCT or enraged rabbit carrot tail that is a buffer for the filament. All the parts needed for the stealth burner then upgrade to the stealth burner for the filament cutter, but I also printed from Iconic Lab rig that I will be using for my future projects, stealth press from the same author, and also the last thing I printed was the Nevermore V6 air filter and also helped to heat up the Voron 2.4 or Voron printers. Most of the parts that I printed required very detailed prints. Some parts need to press fit into others, in some parts you need to insert magnets by press fitting again, rods, bearings, etc. If you've seen my stream last weekend, then you've probably seen that I was able to successfully, maybe slow but still successfully, assemble all of the parts. The quality of the print, and I'm talking here about the mechanical quality, which means that prints need to be perfect, is really awesome. Let's talk about slicing and printing. GD is using fork of Prusa slicer, which actually is fork of slicer. And I'm accustomed to that software because I've been using super slicer for ages. Again, another fork of slicer. 
but if you do not want to use GD Slicer, you can use also Orca Slicer. In both Orca Slicer and GD Slicer, you already have presets for the GD Q1 Pro. One of my friends, Ozren, asked me today to print something for him. He sent me the link, I downloaded the STL file, opened it in a GD Slicer, selected ABS as material, 20% infill, factory speed settings, sliced it, clicked on send to printer and I uploaded there. There from the UI you can select either to upload but also upload and print. After you send the file to the printer of course you can go to the printer, click on the menu, select the file and start the print but we don't do that. You can connect to the printer in two ways, actually more ways but let's talk about two ways. One is to type in the web browser the IP address of the printer. Since this printer is using Clipper, older version of Clipper but still Clipper, that means that it also is using Moonraker and above Moonraker it is using Fluid and that is my, in my personal opinion, favorite UI for the Clipper based printers. There you can manage everything for the printer. You can go to jobs, see all the jobs that you have sliced on this printer. You can go to history and check what you have printed so far, times, durations, filaments used, etc. You can look at time lapses, if you have any time lapses, if you have enabled them. In the tune section, you can see the bad mesh. Then you can go and change your configuration, look at system settings, but also look at additional settings for the fluid clipper, etc. And yes, you also have option to see preview of the file currently printing, but you can also cancel partial prints or cancel specific parts so they do not get printed. For example, if there is a problem with adhesion, if that part is failing, you can just cancel that specific part and continue printing all the other parts. But let's also talk about one cool thing. Since this is a clipper printer, what we can also do is we can add this printer to Home Assistant. For that, you need to have HACS or HEX enabled in your Home Assistant, go to Integrations page, click on Add Integration and type in Moonraker. Select Moonraker from the list of HEX components, click on Download and Download. You will need to restart your Home Assistant and after it restarts, go to Integrations inside Home Assistant, click on Add Integration, once again search for Moonraker, select OK and you will be presented with the configuration menu. Here you just need to type in one thing and that is the IP address. Everything else can stay the same. Click on OK, select an area where you want to add this device and voila, your Home Assistant now has GDQ1 Pro added to Home Assistant with more than 190 entities. There are a lot of macros that you can start from Home Assistant but also a lot of statistical information. For example, total print time, current print time, current temperatures, set temperatures, estimated time of the print, but also the STL preview, but maybe the most fun thing is that we now have access to generic camera and that camera inside Home Assistant, yes, that's actually the camera inside the printer itself. What are the issues, what is good and what's bad with the printer? On cons or the negative side, I really would like to see a newer version of Clipper. I know that unfortunately because of the display, but still I really would love to see a newer version of Clipper. I'm not saying that I'm missing anything specific, just I would like to run the latest version available. Also the case, in my opinion the case is just too big. It's almost half a meter by half a meter by half a meter for the print size of 245 by 245 by 245. This printer is actually bigger than my Voron 2.4 that has 300 by 300 by 300 built area. I'm not sure why they decided to create such a big case. There probably are some good reasons but in my opinion it's just a bit too bulky. Also I already mentioned the camera. I don't know if this is the issue with my printer but I simply cannot get a perfect picture out of this camera. It always looks foggy. It looks like the fumes from the ABS went inside the camera or inside the lens and I cannot clean it. I'm aware that those cameras never are 4K cameras but still I would love to have a bit better camera because I'm content creator. I'm missing here an opportunity to create a better time lapses. And I love time lapses of the things that I'm printing. But what are the good things? If you consider that this printer is perfect out of box, you just need to remove a couple of screws that are holding the build plate down during the transport, cut a couple of zip ties and you are good to go. Also, unlike some other companies, you do not need cloud account. 
Yes, there is a way for the printer to be connected to the cloud. And there is also a mobile app that you can use currently in the beta, but you do not need that. I've never attached this printer to cloud. I'm not planning to use the cloud, but still I can download the update if there is update. And I already did that and everything is working perfectly. You do not need cloud accounts, no matter what some companies are trying to sell you. Just imagine if, for example, they decide that they do not want to support your version of printer anymore, or the company goes bust because, for example, they had some problems with printers and the recalls, and it costs too much and they bankrupt. What would you do with your printer? Use it as a big paperweight. With printers that work local only, and I do prefer local only things, you do not have issues even if the companies go bankrupt. What's my final verdict for this printer? If you consider the price, and the price is 469 euros for the printer, currently it's not available, it will be available mid-May from the US warehouse and in mid-June from the EU warehouse. I consider this to be very, very, very reasonable price for the printer of this quality. While some of you may have not heard about the Chidi, Chidi has been building printers for years and they are usually building the printers that are prosumer type of printers. They are trying to go in a professional direction, but still maintaining the simplicity and the price for home users. In my opinion, if you are looking out of box great printer, you definitely should consider this one here. All the links to all the STLs, the projects, the GD affiliated link will be down in the video description. So if you want to check something out, don't forget to go down there. Also, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really means a lot. And while you are already down there, check that you are subscribed. If not, click on the subscribe button so you can get notified on the future video updates and of course the streams. And lately I have been having streams each weekend, so don't miss on that too. And before I end up this video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for really all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, shared, commented, subscribed or been around the channel. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.